same amount of beer. But we, 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 we just... You can get an all over and done with if you go first barrel. And then it's done. <laughs> that could be a pain thing. We picked on Jim for not giving us a, a shirt last year. For the whole time. I've never got a shirt. Getting away with mates is really, really important. It's one of the times you can share experiences. Um, the great thing about fishing the top end is there's so many species on offer. You can go up a tight creek, you can be catching barramundi, jacks, uh, threefin salmon, golden snapper, all in the one creek. Um, I love that variety. Um, also, if you're gonna go on long trips, you need to uh, be well planned. You need to think about how you're gonna go and it's always great to talk to people who've been there before. Well, for me, there's two different kinds of trips. There's trips where you're actually going after targeting specific species. So they're very goal orientated. And I like those because it sets a pretty specific thing to go after. But a trip like this coming up to Melville Island and Northern Territory, where it's just a lucky dip. Every cast could bring about something completely different. The whole experience is just something awesome. You get great facilities or sometimes you might be out in a camp and rough it as they're the sorts of things that really make trips come together. Just sort of fit, sitting here at the mouth of this little drain here, right at the, the bottom of the tide. Um, got a couple of little little eddies on the on the corners here. The fish tend to sort of sit in these little eddies, just throwing in little four, three and four inch uh, paddle tail plastics, just slow rolling them across the bottom. Picking up a few fish here, all in the sort of 50 centimetre range, all sitting down reasonably deep. So uh, plastics is about the only way we're going to get them on in this little spot, I think. But, uh, there's a few here, so they're just keeping us entertained. guiding in the early 90s I, got, I was pretty lucky I got a um, bit of a job in New Guinea with Dean Butler back in the early days and uh, when I after New Guinea then I started I got to start at Barra Base in 1994 and I've sort of been in Darwin guiding ever since I've had a couple of years off in between with her family and that but I'm still back out here enjoying it now if I get the, my choice of going fishing, anything I can cast a lure at or a fly at, that's what I'm happy doing. So probably more like, like the estuaries and the rivers. But that's my, I really enjoy that. So. Lure casting, up the creeks like we're sort of trying to do now, and you cast lures, a whole range of lures and species. We've got, you can probably catch, expect to catch 12 different species of fish in a day. Mainly barras, mangrove jack, golden snapper, Threadfin salmon, blue salmon, queenfish, trevally, the list goes on and on. First cast, she's cast in there. <clears throat> Got it sort of, sort of close. She's gone twitch, twitch, straight on, 101. Pulled out, landed it. <clears throat> 
Drive back in up onto the, onto, the, onto the sand here. Next cast, twitch, twitch, bang, 103. <laughs> two cast, two meters. Catching boys? No, nah, not a lot. <laughs> no, we haven't. Five or six? Uh, Greeny's first first cast of the trip, he actually got a barrel in the first cast. Come on, you lazy little stuff. Thing they're using the plastics up here it doesn't hurt them too much. Here's a nice little, probably about 60, 65, and there's another one thrashing around in the background. Um, Barra caught off some sticks on the top of Melville. They would be an absolute prime eating fish, but we got enough tucker, so we're just gonna let him go. And he ate that little Rapala, just twitched around the color change, and that is a beautiful little Barra. We'll just give him a swim, and let's get another one.
And see, it's a good example of matching the hatch. You can see all these juvenile, what are they? Look like juvenile wolf herrings.
you're looking for here, Wells? Um, there's a little patch of reef here. It was actually quite a large bit of reef, and um, trying to find a couple little lumps that'll show up here in a minute. Hopefully, we can find a dewy or um, some golden snapper. Those these for a bit of bait. There you go. There's a big slab. We're just anchored on a reef, fishing for black dew and golden snapper. Just started. Mix getting a couple of taps there. We've got a fish on here, this doesn't look like a juice. We've got something on, something small. Goldie! Small golden snapper. And then... Goldie. Have a little goldie here. Little goldie. Golden snapper. Nice little goldie pet. Golden snapper or finger mark rim. This is one of the best eating fish in the yeah. territory. So this guy's coming home. Plus they're also a bit hard to release. We've got this one in about 12 meters of water, which is a bit beyond their release abilities. But he won't go to waste. There's a lot of hungry people back at the camp who are going to love this. This is just taken on a piece of mac tuna that we caught about 20 minutes ago. Beautiful recycling. Uh, the fishing experience is going to new places, fishing new waters. Um, of course coming to a well-run lodge, great guides, great boats, great food makes the real difference. Um, obviously Millville Island Lodge is one of those lodges that we as a fishing world team come up to regularly. But alternatively I like just going out on my own boat, um, getting a few mates together and throw the swags in and we go on three and four day trips. Um, it's about getting away and it's really about the people. I mean fishing is great, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, but it's the people who you go out with which make the real difference. If you're ever interested in going on a travel fishing adventure, whatever you do, make sure you do your research. There's plenty of stuff on the internet. You can find destinations all around the world, but try and find someone who's been there first and try and make sure that they've been there recently. Because lodges go through changes, they go through changes in managers and owners. So only piece of advice I'll give you, do your research.